Okay, this is uh, a motor that's gotten some notoriety uh, recently. I've done a couple of those myth versus fact videos um, highlighting uh, Melissa's claim about um, electric foot controllers uh, versus electronic foot controllers and dispelling the myths that she was uh, propagating on her uh, web page. Uh, so you've already seen this motor, but you had actually seen it pre-optimization. Um, I just got done, as you probably have seen on, <coughs> excuse me, seen on Facebook, um, going through a number of steps, uh, 40 plus steps actually, and uh, going through this motor, uh, cleaning it, optimizing, tuning it, uh, doing everything that needs to be done to get it to its max output power. So this motor typically uh, runs a range of anywhere from 1.1 to 1.3 amps. Uh, we are going to be at 1.3 or maybe even a little bit higher now that it's been optimized. And I did stick with the foot controller that uh, Eric uh, had sent me, which is this one right here. It's an electronic foot controller, which needless to say, when Melissa sees this video, she'd be like, Oh, wow, I changed his mind. Uh, no, I still like the electric foot controllers, uh, like the one over here. Um, traditional Bakelite style, but my customer sent this particular foot controller with this uh, 332 FAF motor, and so I had to optimize the two of them together because they're going to be working together a lot, which is great. Uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a five minute timer on this as well. I'll get a couple of quick temps on the motor. Uh, motors, just like foot controllers, if they're not optimized, uh, they can have a tendency to run hot. I'm sure some of you have experienced that, so I'm not preaching to anyone but the choir. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. And when you optimize a motor, it's from the inside out. So you'll see in the Facebook pictures, I did a lot of stuff on the inside of the motor and uh, documented just a small portion of that. And also the outside as well, like that trans transistor uh, on the rear of the motor there, that also was caked in oil and dirt, and that also had to be uh, cleaned up and optimized as well so that it'll run efficiently and run cool when it's at max power. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing is running this at max power. Let me flip my screen around, and I will see, hopefully, what you're seeing. So... First thing we're going to do is just get a temp on this transistor back here. This has a tendency to get very warm during operation. And our temp right now, as you can see, I think, is 59.9. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to write these down. You're going to have to remember them because this is just an impromptu that I'm doing for the customer right now. And our motor itself is 61.8. Uh, and I've already been running this motor a little bit, truthfully, so it's probably going to be on a little bit on the warmer side than it was when we started. I'm also to protect uh, the foot controller because it is uh, all plastic. I'm also going to go ahead and put a little buffer. I'm going to come out a little bit on the shot. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of buffer on top of this foot controller which is this blue sticky pad similar to the red one that I have underneath the motor and then we're going to get going on this. I'm going to slide, looking at my shot here, I'm going to slide that foot controller in a little bit so that we'll be able to see the screen uh, on the timer, which, as usual, to try to conserve battery power, it looks like it's timed out, so I'm going to have to bring it back to life again. All right, I'm hoping that you will be able to see that in the shot. I'm going to tilt it a little bit because we have a different angle, obviously. Uh, on the camera here and I'll move the foot controller in as well if you're extremely observant you'll notice that I do not yet have uh, the pulley on the motor on the far right side of that shaft um, I just didn't put it on yet obviously it's going to go back on before it goes to the customer okay so let me do this let me go ahead and move this uh, foot controller in and I'm going to see if I can use a weight to depress it, because I would rather not have to hold 
onto this foot controller for a full five minutes if at all possible. Okay, and I will, I promise, I promise, Eric, I will set this down gently, but I'm going to try to set it down in conjunction with getting the timer going. This is a pretty heavy weight, holy mackerel. All right, timer's going. And yes, it is running right now, full speed. Uh, really quite quiet. It's quite a bit quieter than when I was running this motor with those uh, Mythbusters things. Oh, that sounds so smooth. All right, I'll come back out. I apologize. Come back out so you can see the timer. We are at right around, let me come out a little bit further, there we go, what do we have about, a little bit short of two minutes has passed, I've got that electronic foot controller all the way to the floor. I mean talking pedal to the metal folks. Sixty three point eight right now. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. This little transistor on the back. Fifty nine point nine. And we are running at absolute max right now. We're about uh, three minutes into this. We got about another two minutes to go. Boy, oh boy, I'm seeing leather sewing with this puppy now. I was looking more at like denim sewing when I got this motor from uh, Arik, but I'll tell you one thing, I'm seeing leather sewing now, folks. Multiple layers, multiple layers. All right, what do we got? We've got about two minutes and 23 seconds left. It's absolutely steady. Listen to the motor. Before I went through this motor inside and out, as you'll see the pictures on Facebook, it had an irregular fluctuation to it. It would kind of go up and down. It was fluttering. And now with that max power, if uh, Eric decides to go pedal to the metal, he's going to have absolute positive power uh, even using this electronic foot controller, it's not going to have a, a point like it did in the videos, the myth versus facts, where it took a while to, to reach that peak. Now you go pedal to the metal with this electronic foot controller and this motor that I've optimized to it, and it immediately leaps to that peak level. There's no hesitation. There's no pause. It just rock and roll. So we'll do another spot check. We got a little bit over a minute left. I'm going to check the motor first of all. 73.9. Not sure if you can see that. Hopefully you can. And we'll check our little capacitor back here, a little transistor. And we're running at about 64.2. Those temperatures are ridiculously low. We've been running this at absolute max for four minutes now. We're down to the wire now, down to about 50 seconds left. 
and this motor is running as cool as a cucumber. I kind of wish now that before I did that myth versus fact uh, challenging Melissa's claims that I had optimized this motor already uh, because no doubt that foot controller had to work harder with this motor uh, because it had not yet been optimized. Our temperatures would have been dramatically lower than they were even in that last test where we were running uh, that motor uh, with that 332. So we're down to about 20 seconds folks. I'm getting ready to shut her down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, my Lord, that sounds just... Ooh. You know what? If you're running with a motor that has not been optimized by me and a foot controller that has not been optimized, you are missing the boat big time, folks. All right, let me flip my little screen around so I can hopefully see what you're seeing. There we go. Okay. So, top of the motor. 78.4. And that's after five minutes of continuous operation at absolutely peak speed. 78.4. And now this capacitor on the back. That should be hotter than blazes, folks. It's only 59.9. That's the difference that my optimization process makes on a motor and a foot controller. You get temperatures like this, it's absolutely bonkers, crazy nuts. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see another post by Melissa in the near future that vintage motors like this one will overheat at minimal peak speed and catch fire. Well, we just did it for five continuous minutes, just as we had done with that foot controller and that FAF 332 machine as a final answer to challenge the myth that Melissa was propagating. And we got some temperatures, I think the highest we got was around 90 degrees. And again, running it at, at a load at you know a slow speed with a motor like that, we're gonna get, we're gonna get temperatures that are in that range. That's absolutely acceptable. Now we ran this motor at peak speed. Now motors are different than foot controllers. They're going to pick up a lot more heat. They're going to generate a lot more heat the faster you're running them, just like a car engine. And so we ran that at absolutely peak speed for five minutes, and we got temperatures that were crazy. Spin it back if you want to hear the temps again, because I didn't write them down as I had done in that myth versus fact, but that is absolutely amazing what that just did and again immediate response now when it comes you don't have to wait for power from this FAF 332 motor anymore and I know that Eric down in uh, Saint oh, I always forget the name of the city Saint Francis Wisconsin is going to have an absolute blast with this motor now that it's running at peak capacity Again, we were probably getting about 0 .8, 0 0.8 to 1.0 amps out of this motor when uh, we did those tests, the myth versus facts, and the foot control. It, it had not yet been optimized. Now we're pushing, by the sound of it, about 1.1 to 1.3, probably closer on the 1.3 range. This motor, now that it's been optimized, is running better and stronger than most Husqvarna 1.5 amp motors that have never been on this workbench. I'm going to say it again. This FAF 332 motor that peaks between 1.1 to 1.3 is running stronger and better than the majority of the Husqvarna green machines out there that have 1.5 amp motors that have never been on this workbench. I know that's a bold statement, and I'll back it up 100% because I know what motor output looks like, and this motor is crazy right now. I mean, it's 
it's going to have so much burst, so much torque, so much drive. It's going to knock Eric's socks off. And I never met this gentleman, so I am guessing that that's how his name is pronounced. If it isn't, I apologize profusely. It's either Eric or Eric. So we'll go with both, either Eric or Eric. Uh, you're going to love what this motor does now, my friend. So if you have a motor and you have a foot controller at home and it's never been optimized and you've been using it for years and you're like, oh, I watch Scott's machines and I just wish mine could do what his could do. Stop wishing. Take that motor off of the machine, box it up with a foot control and send it to my workshop. I will take care of it for you, just like I did for my friend from St. Francis, Wisconsin. Okay? All right, stay tuned for more great videos like this, and uh, I'm signing off. Take care.